Senator McConnell, last night, he and Majority Leader Reid will be meeting with their conferences and caucuses over the next few hours to get their take on this deal. Joining me now, Idaho Senator Mike Crapo, a member of the Banking, Budget, and Finance Committee, a part of the Gang of Six, and a Deputy Republican Whip. Senator, thanks for coming on this morning. Good to be with you. Well, let me start with the basics. Uh, how many Republicans are going to support this deal in the Senate is your sense. I thought you might ask me that. Uh, that's going <laughs> hey, to be really, you know, you got to you got right. to get your whip out, right? <laughs> that's that's right. I, you know, I think at least 30, maybe even 35 will support it in the end. Uh, there will be some who pull back, but I don't think we'll lose too many more than that. That's pretty good. So you think it bipartisan this will be 70 to 80 overall votes, that kind of message you'll be able to send to the house. I think so. You know, it's always dangerous to crawl out on a limb and make a prediction about how the vote is going to go on something as controversial as this. Right. But I believe that in the end, we will see pretty strong support in the Senate on both sides. All right, let's talk about this super committee here, uh, because in many ways it's, it's modeled, uh, whether uh, folks in Washington believe it or not, it's modeled off the various bipartisan either commissions that were created or ones that were formed like the one you were a part of when it comes to the I know Senator Conrad wants to call it a group of six not a gang of six um, he said there are no gangs in North Dakota I don't know about Idaho but That's let me right. start w with uh, advice for this super committee why do well, we think all, this will get through when every other bipartisan effort has failed well so far we haven't had a a committee approach that had the kind of teeth that this one has uh, the gang of six did come forward with and it's still out there a very powerful pro-growth plan that not only deals with our deficit but also by lowering taxes generates greater revenue for our deficit reduction and that plan is still out there and gaining support it could actually be a very major part of the deliberations of this committee Whatever the committee does, though, the reason that this committee is uh, appealing is because it has teeth that previous committees have not had. This committee, if it reaches a result, is guaranteed to get a vote on the floor of the Senate and the House. If it does not reach a result, there are guaranteed consequences that achieve savings. And so both the mechanism at the end for a gridlock and the mechanism for expediting consideration of a result right. are very powerful parts of this. The one thing I am a little concerned about is the enforcement mechanism at the end and whether it's strong enough. But uh, at least we are at the point where we're debating the strength of the enforcement mechanism. Well, that's what I found fascinating is that that was the holdup last yesterday. You know, when we were waiting, it felt like, frankly, it, it brought back memories for me of just waiting for the birth of my first child. I mean, just took hours and hours waiting for the announcement that we, we finally had a deal. And it was over the trigger. And it always, that's actually kind of depressing because that means it's almost an acknowledgement that the expectation is, and you talk behind the scenes, people on both sides assume this committee will end in a deadlock. Well, there's two pieces of it. First, there was a, a high likelihood that it could end in a deadlock because it was balanced evenly, uh, six Republicans and six Democrats, no tiebreaker. Uh, I think they won't result in a deadlock, but that was a problem. There was a bigger problem, though, and that is they're talking about hopefully coming up with a 10-year plan, a very powerful plan, I hope, like the Gang of Six plan, but one that needs to be implemented for 10 years. And what we've seen here in Congress is with our current enforcement mechanisms, Congress never goes into the second, third, or later years of the plans that it puts out to the American people. And what we need to be sure, and why there was such a battle over those enforcement mechanisms, right. is that if we put something out, it has to be held. We, we have to hold to it. Uh, one final question here. I talked to a lot of senators uh, behind the scenes that are not in leadership, and this has been on both sides of the aisle over the last couple of weeks. And I sensed uh, some frustration. I sensed frustration that the, your gang of six wasn't taken as seriously by leadership on both sides of the aisle. I sensed frustration that they feel as if they haven't had enough of a role in all of this. Um, give some voice to this. Tell, you know, what is it that leadership could do better going forward uh, at a moment like we've seen over the last couple of weeks and making sure senators who are not in leadership and don't always get to be in the room with the president actually have an impact on this? 
Well, first of all, you're absolutely right. There is a high degree of unhappiness and frustration with the fact that we did not follow regular order. We didn't go through the committee process. We didn't have legislation moved forward in a way that we could study it and vet it and amend it and improve it as it moves toward the floor for consideration. And that is the way you truly get, get higher quality and greater buy-in in your legislation. And, and so uh, I think that the lesson to our leadership is that we should follow regular order more closely in these huge battles. That's one of the reasons, frankly, that I believe this committee that's being established uh, should openly and uh, should operate openly and publicly in a way that helps to bring in not only other members of Congress, but the public as their deliberations proceed. And are you uh, going to go to your leadership and make sure that, you know, there's some fear that each side will put sort of a poison pill members on there, right? Members that they know at the end of the day will protect the bases of the parties here. How do you prevent that? Well, first of all, you put people on who have to protect the base of their party, and I expect that, and I think that's actually healthy. But you also put people on who are willing to think outside the box and find ways to achieve solutions that solve, that are win-win solutions for both sides. For example, uh, the Gang of Six bill in dealing with revenue. Instead of raising taxes in the age-old battle that we have here over should we raise tax rates on the wealthy or should we do something else, uh, we got around that by saying, look, let's grow the economy. Let's have the kind of pro-growth tax reform that will actually allow us to generate the revenue piece for our deficit reduction through growing the economy. And so there are ways to get win-win solutions if you don't just get into those headbutting battles on a partisan basis. And that's the kind of people we need on this committee. All right, Senator Mike Crapo, Republican from Idaho. We don't know about the gang issue. Group of 12 now is what we're all going right. to be watching for. Senator, thanks very much. Thank you.